Well, welcome on back, everybody, to Cusa Grande, the bad video game tournament. You know, in the midst of doing the loser's bracket, we're still going to continue on with some of the winner's bracket rounds. We're moving on to round two, not another platformer. The rule here is that either I or the GM who is choosing for the match will choose a game that is not a platformer. Very, very straightforward there, you know. Yeah. It's a good round. I like it. We get a little more diversity when it comes to video games here. So please welcome on in our uh, our friend and possibly somebody who is a little bit terrifying, Mike Guyama. Mike Guyama, come on down. Oh man, I know he's been busy with GDQ submissions since those are coming in and due by tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. By tomorrow. Submit. Submit your games to GDQ. Oh, hello there, Mike. Are you there? I am here. Ah, yes, perfect. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling everybody they need to submit to Games Done quick because submissions yes, are you, due you tomorrow. Yes, you said the word submit a lot, but yes, today is the last day of submissions. Wait, today? Yeah. Uh, these shirts today? Let me it's double check. Fourth. It better not be today. Um, it, oh, is it the fourth? But for some reason, I thought it was the third. Oh my gosh, Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Now open till okay, October Okay, you 4th. are correct. It is the 4th, so you never almost mind. You, a have, you have a day and a half. <laughs> because I, I'm going to submit Superman for Atari 2600. Uh, because I decided I wanted to look at that, and then I accidentally learned how to run it. <laughs> you accidentally learned how to run it. Yeah, basically, but as soon as you know how to... high learning curve. Well, as soon as you learn how to beat it, or how to understand what is going on, then you know how to speedrun it. It's great. Uh. <laughs> okay, anyways, Mike, we, we've got not another platformer coming up, uh, and yeah. I actually have played some of this game. Yes, you have, and you hate it. <laughs> you just died every second. Yeah, did I it's actually funny. stream it on a GDQ bonus stream? I, if I, not, I, I, I think you, I think you did very, very long time ago. Maybe it wasn't the bonus stream, but it was definitely right after one of the very old SGDQs that was. It was still at Essentia's house. Essentia's house, yeah, yeah. So it would have been 2012. Yeah, I'm, um, so. I'm very familiar with this. And <laughs> yeah, I'm very familiar with like all five minutes or so of play. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very much not a good game. Um, however, it is from the creators of Subterranea, a game that you do like, and, you know, is flawed, but, you know, has oh, good yeah. points. But this game is essentially a glorified uh, Genesis tech demo. Um, <laughs> let me, let me uh, show you um, what I mean by that. I'll post it in chat soon. Just hold on. I think chat already knows what's coming their way. <laughs> and yes, they, they already know. It's right zones. Yeah, that's right. Look at the... We have so many muscles today, okay? that That's what the stream yeah, is all about. There's a lot muscle. of muscles. Muscle day, everybody. I hope... So, all of the things mentioned in that PNG are true. And so, like, this game is incredibly impressive on technical level for the Genesis. Like, what it does with the Genesis hardware is very impressive. The problem is they forgot to, they kind of forgot to make a game out of it. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, there, there are some things that are a little bit more flawed, but uh, it definitely is a better tech demo than game. Yeah, like... Um, there are actual like textures in the game, like texture mapping and the like. It's like, uh, and it's all done through like sprites and you know, the original Genesis hardware. There is some actual full motion video, even though it's very compressed and it's all like black and red uh, for the intro. But it and and you do get something resembling Mode Seven on the Genesis, which in itself is very impressive. It's just the game is not game is not fun, and it's incredibly unforgiving. Oh, it's it's a blast. Whatever. Uh, yeah, and by a blast, so, I yeah, mean we'll such a blast. You can only stand five minutes. On it. Uh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, MDI, yeah, that was kind of Xerox's thing. Um, with Subterranea, they also really pushed the limits of the Genesis, but Subterranea has more positive and game qualities than Red Zone does, and and is more fun. But Red Zone is. Uh, 
unless you're McCaw who says this game, he thinks this game is awesome. So this is probably one more addition to good. So games grande for him. He said <laughs> this game is awesome. Like, okay. Yes. Just because it has he, he muscles. Said the doesn't only mean legitimate complaint about this game is that it's really hard. That's, that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. McCaw, if you're watching, you're full of lies. I would say less full of lies and more full of macaw and oh. enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, I don't believe Lightyear is streaming yet. Uh, yeah, you'll have to uh, bug him about that. But, okay, I'm poking uh, him. I, I did give you the multi Twitch. Lorasia so. is definitely streaming though. I do. Yep, see I, I see it. I've got Lorasia cropped. Or Lorasia, I don't know how to say it. And, Lor and Lorasia is um, audio. Perfect. <sighs> I'm just chilling right now to see if Lightyear is gonna get live. By the way, I'm gonna nah. do something kind of fun after this, uh, after the three matches, Mike. I've been working on a bot for BizHawk and Twitch that'll uh, basically let people choose what game to have for a certain amount of time and uh you know it'll automatically switch through the queue and it's gonna be nuts yeah 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 that, that sounds fun oh my what? gosh i could put red zone in there but i'm not going to <laughs> torture yourself again <laughs> yeah, uh, i'm not going to yeah you should not do that lightyear where are you but um lightyear's up i see his stream up Mm -hmm. and, and you can see the full motion video on his stream. All the red and blackness of it and how compressed it is. But it's full motion video on a Genesis cartridge. Uh, so I will, impressive, to be honest. Yeah. I will say this about Red Zone. It also has good music. I don't think the soundtrack is quite as good as Subterranean, but it has some really good stuff. And it's the same composer, Yes for Kid. Um, who, interestingly enough, um, you know, went on to compose for the Hitman games because that's what this developer went on to do. But he also went on to compose the Borderlands and Assassin's Creed games. Oh, yeah. So, um, so he's definitely done well for himself since. Like, everybody, look at some of this. Uh, I, I've got the game up now so everybody can see. Uh, some of the animations here. It, it's impressive what they've done. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it really, it does, like, you know, a lot of games back in the day says, pushes the limits of the hardware. This game actually legitimately did push the limits of the hardware, and they used a lot of cool tricks to, you know, pull off all the visual effects on what's going on in the game. The problem is the game's just not fun, and it's overly difficult. <laughs> it's and yes, fun and the Red it's Zone difficult. logo yeah. is exactly the same as the subterranean logo, except, you know, except for the words. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a 3D effect that works, why deviate from it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, for subterranean, which was one of the worst in first part in Genesis games, according to a former uh, producer at Sega of America. Which is probably why uh, this game was not published by Sega. It was published by Time Warner, I think it is. And yes, Code Man. Uh, yes, for Kid did three soundtracks for the Genesis. First two being for Xerox, this and the Subterranean. And his Adventures of Batman Robin is also excellent. Um, the soundtracks all have a pretty similar style. You know, the kind of hard driving, kind of industrial sound, but uh, it's a it's a good sound. Well, I am going to be doing the countdown in Discord. What emotes should people spam? Um, explosions, because they will die at least a couple times. Uh, helicopters, um, guns. <laughs> helicopters, guns, explosions. Oh, exactly. there will, yeah, there will be a lot of explosions. There will be a lot of explosions. Yeah, spam away, because as soon as I see movement in the first stage, I will start our timer. Yeah. All right, um, so I did give the player the manual so they actually like know how to control the game. That's not really going to help them with the mission objectives. The manual oh. does not go over mission objectives. And the first and second missions are a bit of a trick. 
um, because you kind of have to do one of the objection, objectives for the second mission within the first mission, or else you really don't have enough time to accomplish that. Oh, yeah. Objective. And that is disabling the electrical field, which you're only told about in the next mission, but you can disable in this mission. Um, oh, good. And so basically, this is a strike clone. And uh, in a sense, at least. Um, and you see, you do have this like kind of cool like mode seven ish effect with the rotating and everything. Um, neither player has actually checked like uh, the map where they're supposed to go. It's actually useful to pause in this game and check the map, which you should do frequently just to make sure you know where you're going. Um, fortunately, Lorassia has found out that you do want to go towards where the orange dot is, and that is the mission objective. Yes. Um, so you're probably thinking, oh, the first mission, this game is really short. No, this mission, this game is actually very, very long. The first um, mission, the first couple missions go by really, really fast, uh, but then it becomes ridiculous. Yeah, no, I mean, even the second mission is pretty difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, Lightyear is kind of struggling and has already taken damage. When you take damage, for the sake of realism, <laughs> uh, you can start getting parts of your copy disabled, so like, Light years, tail is damaged, so now his copter is constantly spinning out of control, so he has to, like, resist. <laughs> he has to counterbalance that when, whenever he wants to go straight. Yeah. And uh, one of his weapons is disabled, so, like, he just can't use one of his weapons now. Uh, which is really bad in Mission 3 if they get up there, which I think they will. I think the players will at least get up to Mission. I mean, mind you, you know, a after the helicopter is destroyed, you get a new one. I, I mean, I guess everybody <laughs> dies and the world ends, but... Then you get a new helicopter, <laughs> yeah. so it's fine. Yeah, the Republic of Zero sandwich. So Lightyear is actually by the second mission objective, which is that kind of that thing with the you know nuclear logo, and that's what disables all the power fields and stuff. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to explore a little bit since it's It's really not. It's open world, you know, you're you're just Getting uh, your yeah, bearing so straight is helpful. Lorexia <laughs> has encountered why you want to disable the electricity first. <laughs> because or else that turret will just shoot you to death. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually possible <laughs> to pass by there if you just go full speed ahead. Oh, yeah. and the game has the best game over screen, which is probably the best part about the game. Yeah. Death before Dishonor. Death before Dishonor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great review, Paul Lassus says, This game is tough. You may find yourself trashing the cart, but the rush you get from completing a mission is incredible. If you're in the market for a challenge, head off into the red zone. Well, they're not wrong. This game is very challenging for stupid reasons, but stupid reasons is still challenging. I kind of agree with that, yeah. Uh-oh, like, uh, Lorenzi is inputting the password, which uh, means he's going to be stuck in that same situation with the uh, electrical field not being disabled. So, Wandering Mind, uh, yes, these developers did go on to develop the original Hitman games up to Blood Money. Um, oh, I, really? I think, I think after then, um, IO Interactive, you know, either they sold off the company to someone or they just left, but uh, they did, in fact, make the Hitman games up, up to Blood Money. So, th these developers went on to be very successful, <laughs> even though they did not find any success with the Genesis. Yeah. At least it's got really good sound effects. Okay, I think uh, yeah. Lightyear is probably writing down the password, just making sure yeah. he has it. I don't think that it's necessarily a problem to use passwords early on. You know, it might be a mistake if you haven't disabled the electric field to begin with. But how are you supposed to know, right? Exactly. And and as we're actually proven, you don't have to disable the electrical field. You just take a ton of damage. Yeah. So the top down sections are is the one section where that's not if you die, you game over. Um, you have the three characters. Each character basically counts as a life. <laughs> and I did mention to the players that the passwords track progress, and uh, that's technically the progress that it tracks um, is how many characters you have alive. Oh, OK. So if you lose a character, it'll you, you yeah, never the get password that back will, if you use a password. Exactly, the password will take account of losing the character. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, uh, you should see Mirage's walk cycle. She basically waddles, and uh, Loratio took a bunch of damage from the explosions. You're supposed to set off the explosive barrel so that you go through that safely. I mean, or just had explosions. Oh, Lightyear, that's <laughs> another game over. Speaking of explosions, game over. Well, I love it. If you fail at flying your helicopter just right, uh, yeah, that's right. Nuclear war. You're the only muscle standing between the apocalypse and Earth. <laughs> there we go. Okay, hey, Loretia. Put a virus in. Very nice. Logging yeah. off. Uh, hack and toss. <laughs> and... It's been wonderful that. It's Oh, by the way, it has 64 gigabytes in 1994. That's like... All of them. That's like all of the memory, <laughs> all oh, of the storage yeah. space. Uh, also, I love that it's called virus.exe. At least you know what file right? to load. Uh, later on, there's also destroy.exe and wagon.exe. <laughs> Why and, wagon? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's because um, it's transporting missiles. So, mm. Lorassia did not bring the explosives. There's explosives in the bottom of the room, and you can pick them up. And if you read the manual, I did hand out the manual. Uh, if you press A and B at the same time, that's how you use the, the, the explosives. So Lorassia is not getting out of here. Um, however, you can still complete the mission, but he will permanently lose Rock. Because technically, if he's done the mission, he's just sacrificing Rock to do it. I mean, if it comes down to it, uh, you know, Lorassia can always use a password to go back to an earlier stage. Exactly. Or even restart the game. It's like, what, five minutes? And it's, it's not very far. Yeah, exactly. It's like seven minutes. Okay, there we go. On to mission three. It's a little bit of a lead. Not a huge lead, lead, but, you know, it's a good start to this. Now, so this is a mission where they're going to start getting really stuck. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. um, that Northwestern Air Base. So, first off, you have to destroy enough planes that are taking off of the runway, or else you just will die, basically. Um, uh, Lurisha's uh, helicopter is, is dead. <laughs> at, least, at least you get a new helicopter when you load the password, right? That's true. That's the, Yeah, I, I I think your helicopter is restored to full health and uh, full fuel. Oh. So Lightyear is encountering the third mission already. Um, so what you need to do is use the Stinger missiles to take down these planes. Um, you only get four Stinger missiles, and there's like six or seven planes, so you actually have to shoot some of them down before they get off the runway. Or else they just shoot you like that, and you just lose about half of your armor. Yeah, they're really evil. They destroy yes. you. Lightyear did find out shockingly quick how to use this uh, the Stinger missiles, though. I will oh, yeah. say that. Uh, but Lightyear's dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're about eight minutes into this. Uh, again, this is round two for the winner's bracket. Whoever loses is not eliminated. They'll have a little bit of a struggle. Uh, but honestly, you know, at this point, uh, there is still plenty of chance for Lightyear to make up time. There's plenty of chances for Loratia to get stuck. And I think both players are going to get stuck at one point or another. Uh, yeah, no. Mission 3 is going to be... Uh, it's going to troll them a lot. And then Mission 4... And then basically every single mission after Mission 2 is just going to... Oh my gosh, Mike! What? Try and... Oh, Lorisha was trying to go under something. Um, so that's actually a gate that opens for mission four. You do need oh. to go there, but Lorisha just went there too early, basically. Ah, uh, gotcha. Oh, wow, going under. It's uh -oh. risky. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 Lorisha, oh. you took the risks that were completely not worth it. <laughs> yep. Don't do it. Like, it's logical. Yeah. You don't fly a helicopter under beams. Yeah, so Trinity. Trinitronity, um, that's what I was explaining earlier. This game really does push the limits of the Genesis hardware. Like, it does a lot of ridiculous tricks on the Genesis, and oh, yeah. as um, Karaz says, it doesn't use polygons, vectors, or anything like that, even though it does have textures. Like, 
it, when you see the overhead levels, you will see textures on like the tables and stuff like that. Yeah, honestly, like I said, uh, fantastic tech demo. Uh, Game-wise, I don't think it's great. Like, yeah, it's uh, really this not. Yeah. This is one of the weird cases where the game seems to be more entertaining the less you know about it. And then as you become better, it's like, well, it's a slog now. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was vaguely interested in speedrunning this, but then, like, it turns out the game actually has a bunch of stupid damage boosts and stuff and character sacrifices you have to do. So, uh... And then when I learned it actually be like kind of hard to do, I just gave up. <laughs> and I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone is actually speedrunning this game. Like I don't know if this game is a cage and speedrun. I love it, Mike. Uh, I'd have to put effort into this. <laughs> I mean, there are games that deserve effort. Red Zone is not. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Well, I, I've got a bowl of chili here, just. Enjoying some red zone and I don't know, enjoying <laughs> food. It, it's a perfect Saturday. Yeah, so Loracia just encountered the uh SAMs or the the anti-air missile installations and uh yeah those things are nasty. Like yep. you have to kill them really fast or they will just fire so many missiles at you. You will either die or take a significant amount of damage. I mean I agree, at least the base has really good defenses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of the entertainment value is how the game just pulls you. <laughs> Lightyear, having a really hard time against that ground missile thingy. <laughs> ground missile thingy? <laughs> ground missile thingy, that's my new name for it. Yeah, ground missile thingy. Right. It's on the ground, launches so, missiles. Yeah, Lightyear is really struggling. Um not on mission three yet, doesn't know what thing to disable to prevent the missile from, to just get inside the base and prevent the missile from launching. And yeah. <laughs> the game over screen is so satisfying though, Mike. I'm really glad it has it. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> just the explosion and death before dishonor. <laughs> It's great. It's perfect. So how did you find this game, Mike? What, like, what made you first pick this up? Um, what made me first pick it up was that it's, you know, one of the three games that Xerinx made um, as the company Xerinx. Uh, the final one being a game called Scorcher, which is a racing game for Saturn. And because I had just done a subterraneous speedrun, this was like eight years ago or so, I wanted to play this game. And okay. this game, and, <laughs> and that, that's why I played it. Um, I have beat this game. It's been a long time since I beat it, so I don't remember all the particulars of it. This game is relentless in both in its trolling and its difficulty. Oh, yeah. Um, it's incredibly unforgiving. For example, Lorassi is in carrying shoot too late, where you have to use the stingers in time. Yep. Or else you just lose half your armor. A shoot too late. It's good. <laughs> shoot too late. Shoot too late. <laughs> and the first time you encounter it's so fast. You're like, what do I do? What do you do? And then you just die. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to use the stingers, which are the air to air missiles, to counter the planes. However, if, if you let more than four planes survive, on the runway, uh, that means at least one of the planes will shoot you and because you won't have enough stingers because you can only hold up to four stingers. Now, I, I was thinking a little bit about this round because, you know, we do the uh, not another platformer round. I, I think that largely there are a lot of bad platformers out there and it's very easy. Like, I, I think they get chosen a lot because they're very easy to tell what is wrong with them. It's very easy to see uh, when uh, people get shut down. For other types of games, though, you know, I don't, I don't want just people who are good at platformers making it through. You got to have a variety of skills, and so That's you know, th this can be a wall for certain people, you know, who yeah. are very good at platformers but struggle with other. 
uh, with, with yeah, other genres. I mean, this game is like, it's really not like a lot of games of its time. Um, probably the closest thing would be the Strike series. And even the Strike series controls differently than how this game does. Oh, I haven't yeah. played too much of the Strike series. It's funny because the Strike series was like very well regarded and I think it sold really well in the day and just like everyone has forgotten about it since. Um, I remember that series got really great reviews back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is definitely a game where platforming skills aren't really much of a factor. There are some places where you jump during the top-down sections, um, but platforming oh, yeah. is definitely not the main focus. Well, it's really... It's like changing between a lower layer and a higher layer. Yeah, it's not really... Yeah, exactly. Bad. No, there's actually parts where you have to like jump over stuff or else you die. <laughs> there's, uh, there's pits and stuff. In fact, th I'm pretty sure um, one of them will get to the interior area of Mission 3, and there are collapsible floors and oh, pits yeah. that have to jump over. Oh my gosh, I <laughs> forgot about that. Oh, that part's yeah, evil. Yeah, exactly, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. For better or for worse, I remember. Hey, Lightyear is taking the time to look around at the map. I think that's actually a fairly yes. helpful thing to do. Yeah, so the map in this game is actually very good. <laughs> like, it is definitely worth pausing the game to look at them. Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen uh, Laratia do that at this point. And unfortunately, Laratia still is not quite getting how to shoot the planes down. Yeah, so Lightyear knows. So if he gets up to mission three and gets to the part, he gets to that part and shoots the plane down, he'll he'll be in the lead. Yeah, Lightyear um, is definitely problem. behind, but uh, at the same time, you know, having that piece of knowledge is super important. It is. It is. Because honestly, it took me a long time to figure out how to take down those planes the first time I played this game. And, you know, doing this blind, it's it's really like playing this game is almost like playing a puzzle because you're just going to get trolled first. Like you're just going to get trolled and you have no idea what's going on. And like you just have to figure out, oh, don't do this. Shoot these things down quickly. Use this path to the less enemies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Oh, no. Are you saying we have puzzle games, Mike Uyama? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it, in a sense, it's kind of like one because, like, you know, shoot too late. Like, how, how are you supposed to figure that one out with some trial and error? <laughs> I love it. Okay, Grassy did a good job taking care of the planes of the runway. The Quip the Stinger was a little late in that one. So he has the right idea. Okay. He's very nice. So he's maintaining the lead. The problem is he's damaged, so he's going to start spinning out of control soon. Um, and now he has to disable the radar and then go inside the complex, and then you'll have you'll have another top-down mission. Very I will say this: um, Lorassi is making very quick progress. Unfortunately, the enemies are making quick progress through his armor. Yeah. Uh, still. A key piece of knowledge, this section is going to be a lot easier in future attempts, you know. Yeah. Uh, as, as long as you make a little bit more progress every uh, two or three attempts, you know, you're probably going to be fine. Just got to yeah. make a little bit more. And here's the thing. <laughs> That's such a good explosion sound. <laughs> but, uh... Um, even though Lightyear is, like, a fair bit behind there's really he's really not that far back. like he can definitely still catch up oh yeah uh, you have to enter the password every single time <laughs> yep oh, oh uh, fun, annoying. fun fact about the passwords uh so there are 10 stages in this game uh Guess how many? Guess the last stage you can use the password on. Oh no! I think I forgot. Is it stage six? Uh, it, it's a little later than that. Oh good. But still, it's stage eight. Stage eight is the last mission you get a password. You have to do stages eight through nine uh, all in one go. I don't like it. 
<laughs> Especially since stage, um, the last stage has a nasty top-down section with a ton of one-hit kills. That's not super great. Uh, no. No, no. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why they did that, but it certainly does make the game more challenging, I guess. You know, I, I will go ahead and give props to uh, maybe not necessarily the company or the management. Uh, the, the, the game is playable and it's actually really, really technically well done. Like, uh, yes. you, yeah. you would want to have Red Zone on your resume if you're one of the coders or one of the yeah, exactly. graphics. If, if, yeah, if you're an artist, uh, sound designer, like anything technical related when it comes to the game, uh, definitely would want it on your resume. Uh, gameplay design, not so much, but it was the 90s, so really, who was designing gameplay back then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're basically right, yeah. I mean, I mean, the 80s and the 90s were kind of a wild west for games. Oh no, don't try to... So that's where he's supposed to go, but if you don't destroy the enemies there, well, you just saw what happened. Yeah. It's just missile fitting. Like, there, there are a lot of games where when you're flying, you can just dodge attacks or just plow through and tank a few of the attacks. That's definitely not the right strategy for this game, though. Yeah, from what I can see, you know, mo uh, most of the programmers moved on to do Hitman. Uh, the, the person who worked on producing this uh, game ended up working on the Lawnmower Man. Which one? Uh, I believe the Genesis. Okay. Slash Super Nintendo slash... Wait, there was a Game Boy version of... Oh, no, I don't want to look at that. There is a Game Boy version? What? Apparently, apparently there's a Game Boy Lawnmower Man. I mean, there's a Game Boy port of, like, every game from the 8 16 to there, so yeah, I shouldn't be surprised. But still, why? <laughs> does it have any... 3D sections? That's my question, because if so, oh, that would be that makes sense. terrifying. What Kara said, one more man was another Time Warner game. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Lightyear like is still really struggling with this whole, like, electrical field and making it into the inner complex. Yeah, I, like, what you have to do is destroy the thing with the nuclear symbol on it, right? Yes. Yeah, like, and like you're just- Your best chance of do doing that stuff. is at the beginning of the game. Yep. The other thing you can do is just do what Lorassia did and just charge on through. Um, which is honestly pretty smart because then he got the password and was able to just <laughs> move on. <laughs> I'd say dink around, try to figure it out for a little while, try to figure out the way to do it, but then uh, you have to change out your strategy later on. Yeah. Uh, you know, if going slow is not working, then try going fast. Yeah. Wait, Carol's uh. saying the 3D sections for Lawnmower Man are on Game Boy? Oh, I need to see this. Yeah, I need to see it too, because... <laughs> It's impressive enough they did in the 16-bit versions of my Game Boy. It probably runs at like five frames frames per second. <laughs> I mean, that's being generous. That's better than virtual yeah. high light. That's true, which is negative five frames per second. Yeah. The more you play, the older you get. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's true with every game, technically. Whatever, whatever. Beep boop, beep boop boop. Yep. Yeah, Lightyear's trying to destroy this turret. Uh, that's not happening. You know, I feel like maybe they should have sent more than one helicopter here. You know? Uh, yeah, that would probably have been a good idea for taking out the nation of Zero Stan or whatever it's called. Yeah, I'd say especially since it seems like they're very well prepared 
for helicopters. <laughs> yeah, you so, really are. They seem to have an endless supply of missiles and rockets to take care of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud. It's a good job for them, you know? I mean, maybe they could have had, like, a, you know, a boat, a submarine in the mix. <laughs> you know, maybe a couple of tanks. I don't know. A couple of planes, you know, maybe. Maybe those same planes that do the shoot too late. <laughs> those planes seem pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that would that would definitely be a good thing to do. Or, you know, maybe what you could do is uh, burrow underground. Get it like a drill car, okay? Car with a drill on the front. Just like all the supervillains have, you know? I imagine that if they can get you a helicopter, they can get you a drill car. Okay, by the way, uh, we haven't really talked about the lore too much. I I uh, do want to read out the story from the manual so that you can all understand what the stakes are here. A radical party has succeeded in a cruel military coup in a small former communist country. The leader, Ivan Radovitz and his... Uh, Zyristian party have taken over the old Russian nuclear war weapons, creating a dangerous threat to the new world order. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rentovitz is a ruthless leader who has used drug trafficking to finance and purchase Middle Eastern weapons to use in extreme right-wing <laughs> terrorist attacks. With their newly acquired military firepower, Rentovitz's Zyristian party issues an ultimatum to the world. The world must recognize the newborn Zysterian Zyristian state and its leader as the Emperor of the Fourth Empire. Should this proclamation be rejected, the world will become a radioactive desert of death! Yeah, pretty intense. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty intense. So, both of the players entering in passwords in order to get back into this. Yeah. Yeah. I really think if Lightyear's just not going to rush through that gate, uh, he should really just go back to mission one. But I don't think he realizes that. Like, I don't think you can, re you can, re you can, like, do future mission objectives in previous mission. Like, technically, you could do the third, you know, the, the part of the third mission where you, like, blow up all those planes mm -hmm. in the first mission. Just there's no good reason why. I love the face staring back at you when you look at the map. Like, oh, hi. <laughs> right. Don't know who you are. Well scared. Uh, that's the final boss. Wait, the final? Well, I'm glad they know who the final boss is. <laughs> exactly. You get to know him intimately. Oh, good. Well, my continuing the story, in a last desperate attempt to overthrow Renovitz's Zysterian party, Zyristian party, a team of the world's elite troops assemble to devise a covert plan. The team consists of Shades, Rocco, and Mirage. Yeah, that's right, that's their names, everybody. Uh, yep. Each has been trained in martial arts combat, heavy weapon operations, and vehicle reconnaissance. Intelligence has recommended that a small aircraft enter enemy airspace. Once there, the team's job is to destroy Redovitz Command Center, destroy all Zeristian nuclear capability. To accomplish this plan, the elite team secretly built a special three-seater pilot gunner navigator. Apache fighter <laughs> chopper. Well, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad they got three seats in there. You know, he was getting a little cramped with only two seats. Yeah. Hey, do I have to ride in the trunk again? <laughs> no, no. It's really cramped in here in the trunk. Hey, Lightyear just destroyed the radar. Nice. Yeah, good. Let's see if Lightyear uh, learns to pick up the explosives. We'll have to see. Oh, he gets to choose Shades, Rock, or Mirage. You know, I think that if you are going for elite troops, you want somebody who can do the splits while standing. I know, right? Like, he has a super strong core to be able to do that. That or maybe she's... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no, Lightyear just used up half of his ammo on that barrel. <laughs> well, you know. Uh-oh, he's getting dangerous low on ammo, actually. I love it. 
<laughs> yeah, you do not get a lot of ammo in this game. It's his first attempt, you know, he'll figure yeah, it out. Exactly. Okay, now he's out of ammo. No uh, more yeah, so, so that uh, martial art skill, uh, yeah, you don't really like do melee attacks. If you run out of ammo, you just don't shoot. Uh-oh. Trying to figure out what to do. Light your... That's a barrel. I think you can push the barrel onto the explosive, but you'll still die. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Mirage. So like she's supposed to be like the fast character and super graceful, and look at how she walks. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Her hand! I know, she waddles. She's a duck. Yeah, this is this is the description of Jade Mirage Takao. As, sh uh, as Shades was forming his attack team, he was careful to select the most physically and mentally tough military personnel. His decision to enlist the services of Mirage was uncontested and considered brilliant by his superiors. By the way, Mike, I want you to know that these first two sentences and half the descriptions of Mirage are about Shades, okay? Are about the dude. It's describing how he was smart in choosing her. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, 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 she's fast and fierce, and her stealth ability to take out enemy personnel was a necessity in the field. Her use of daggers and cat-like stalking ability landed her the nickname Mirage. The enemy can see her for one moment, and then she's gone. Which is funny, because there's no symptoms in this lane. It's still really... Yeah, it irks me that half of the description is about the dude. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Welcome right? to the like... 90s? Yeah. Yeah, hooray! And yeah, the other characters have like full paragraphs about themselves. Yeah. And don't even talk about any of the others. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. This is so annoying. Like, there's so much in here that talks about all of the little particulars of uh, the helicopter, like full set of functioning controls, a satellite radar system, advanced weapons, 30 <laughs> millimeter chain gun, health fire, tank killer missiles, 70 millimeter rockets, stinger air missiles for air to air combat, and an automatic night tracking system. Yeah. Thank you. I already read most of that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's it, it's kind of the story of the game. They got so bogged down in technical details, including, you know, having the greatest graphics and everything, they kind of forgot to make a game or describe the game properly. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you know, looking at all of that information, it doesn't really help me know how to use any of that. Yeah, that that's great that you're getting me hyped up. Is there a control section in here? There is. In fact, that's the reason why I gave out the manual, so that they could figure out, because I think it would be very difficult to figure out that using explosives is A and B at the same time, but the manual does describe that. Okay. But, uh, if, but they would have had to read the manual thoroughly at the controls, and uh, I don't think either one of them did that. Yeah, or they, they, they also didn't find the explosives, so maybe they did, and they just... <laughs> but yeah, so light your game overs, because that's his last character. Yep. Well, it was However, still a little progress for him. So. Exactly. It is progress. And like, here's the thing. He's still not far behind Lorassia because the most that Lorassia has done is take out the radar installation after getting air superiority. Yep. And Lightyear knows how to get air superiority. Yeah, honestly, we could see a comeback pretty dang quickly. Uh, you, you never really know. Once somebody figures out a section that they didn't know before, they can make super fast progress in this. Each stage is not really that long. Uh, At least this early it, on. It, it depends, yeah. Like, stages one and two are really short. Stage three is pretty long. Uh, stage four is actually not that long, so you know what you're doing. Wait, um, question. Is there a time limit in this game? Um, not in the game overall, but there are time limits in the missions. And while this hasn't become a factor yet because the players are using passwords and everything, but um, you do have a fuel limit and limited ammo. And there's only so many fuel pickups and ammo pickups on the island. Like when they pause, you'll see the F, A, and R. The R is repair, the A is ammo, and the F is fuel. 
And so if you just kind of dawdle around, run out of fuel and, you know, there's no more fuel pickups, well, then you're just kind of boned. Yeah, that makes sense. The manual, like when it says that you have the option to start the game, it specifically says you have 24 hours and basically says, do not dawdle. <laughs> you know, we there's not enough time for any loose cannons here. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with you. Like, dawdling a little bit, especially on the first mission, that's fine. Go do something else, you know, figure things out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of, this game kind of, in a different sense, has the same problem that Subterranea has, is that, like, you kind of want to explore, but the way the game is designed, it just simply discourages it. With Subterranea, it's just that how claustrophobic it is, so it's very hard to like just maneuver around the game in the first place and the limited fuel. Oh, in this yeah. game, it's not just the limited fuel, but just the fact that everything is to murder you. And that, you know, when you get damaged, it's very hard to control your going. I like that for literally en every enemy in the manual, it has advice for how to take them out. Uh, <laughs> like, and what weapons are going to work? Like, at, at the least, they have all the information that's needed here. It's just, you know, it's not really in a very easy to process uh, system, you know? You have to do a lot of reading in order to understand everything that's going on in here. Exactly. But at least it's accurate. And, yeah, it is. Um, that's the thing, like, it's a 90s game, and, like, even though I used to read manuals as a kid, a lot of my friends didn't. So like, <laughs> so like, this is not necessarily a game that's friendly to, to kids because a lot of kids just don't read manuals or don't read them very thoroughly and just want to play the game. Ah, uh, Mike, I'm the type of person who like, if we went and got a new game at Walmart, I, instead of waiting around for my parents, I'd go back to the car and read the manual while waiting for them to finish shopping, you know? Just sit in the car, you know, sweltering heat, flipping through the pages. Yeah. That was that was my childhood, right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I personally like reading manuals too, but... Uh... Yeah, oh yeah, yeah civilization yeah. manuals were huge too. I remember what? having Civ 2 as a kid and like... Yeah, the manual were hundreds of pages. Oh, geez. Oh, you just reminded me of uh, one time we had a cousin over for the summer because he drove his family nuts. Uh, and, <laughs> well, okay, so he drove us nuts, too, for the time that he was with us. But yeah, I remember him spending so much time playing Civilization 2 on the computer and being like, like, I'm like, don't you want to do something else? other than play video games. Like, I play a lot of video games and you are a little obsessed with this. Uh, but he did actually get me into Civ 2, so I, I can at least credit him for doing something positive like that. Uh, but yeah, he was the most annoying person in the world. Like, he would... Okay, we were driving down the road and uh, you know how there are white speed limit signs and there are sometimes yellow speed limit signs. What do the yellow ones mean, Mike? Um, the yellow speed limit signs? Yes, the yellow ones. There are, wait, there are yellow speed limit signs? Oh my gosh. Look, I need to show you how dumb he was. How... <laughs> are you... <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, school zones, school zones. Yeah, 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 school zones have the yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, they have that. Usually, they have uh, lights around them. Most of the time, though, the the yellow ones are advisory, as Bad Road is saying, not statutory. And so, you know, I was trying to explain they're optional. He's like, no, you have to do it. And I'm like, no, you moron. You're not gonna get a ticket. Or going a little bit above the yellow one, their advisory, so you don't fly off the road. He's like, nah, you have to. And then he was also convinced that time would not change from AM to PM until 1201. How, I mean... how stupid. No, it's right at 12 o'clock. 
Right I mean, at right at twelve. But then, oh, I, I don't know. It's not really like proving I'm stupid. It's just proving that he's slightly off by a minute. I don't know. Yeah, but he's it's like. <laughs> no, no, you're stupid if you don't. <laughs> I guess. I mean, yeah, he's wrong, but it's like I'm just having a hard time getting like really incensed or like mad about. This. Well, okay, okay. So there's the fact that, yeah, it wasn't really a, a huge deal those arguments, but he would stick to his guns and not trust anybody else, okay? Oh, uh, okay, so very stubborn and thought he was always right. Yeah, that's very Yeah, I, and I remember, I told him that, uh... You started with that. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the annoying thing, that he would just fight over the dumbest things. Right. And being well, so mean? Well, he's a jerk, okay? <laughs> Okay, well, back to the game. Lightyear found the explosives. Now the question is, did he read the manual enough to learn how to use the explosives? It is worth noting that even if uh, Shades dies, um, he will still have one character and complete the mission. However, that doesn't mean he's down to one character. Yeah, but whatever. Larish is as well. Okay. Oh, uh, ooh, he, Lightyear. He either read the manual or he mashed enough buttons, so... He, he's gonna escape. You gotta push the buttons. Yeah, just gotta mash them. Very yeah, nice. Like the amount of characters you have alive is saved in the password. No, I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, I, I think he's a decent enough kid. It's just that family tended to be. Uh, uh, they at least at one point were rich, and they were all super snooty about it. Uh, ah. Yeah, and I think that's what bothered me. Uh, luckily, we got to take him on a camping trip up into the middle of nowhere over a mountain, and oh my gosh, there's nothing better than seeing the most stuck-up jerk suffering while camping, okay? It's so great. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, like, you wrote down that password because he died instantly trying to escape. Which is as expected, because he didn't disable the turrets. But I think the password comes with the turrets disabled. That would help. Yes. Oh, people are so sad for Lightyear. Don't cry, yeah. he'll be back again someday. Exactly. Like Frosty the Snowman, okay? That's how Lightyear acts. I think he's got I mean, a here's, here's the thing, even though Lightyear is still behind, like... He's... Almost to where Loresia is, and he knows how to take care of the plane. So if he can actually get inside the top-down portion of Mission Three, he'll be ahead. I, <laughs> like, yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised. You know, last match we had a lead change. I think in the final three minutes, uh, and the player uh, yeah, had been behind that. the uh, entire time. Suddenly learned how, how to how to slam enemies multiple times and nearly took out the final boss in the first stage. Yeah. Yeah, they did so fantastic. It was it was it was an amazing watch, and we could definitely see that happen again during this match. Like it's lining up that it's possible. Oh yeah. There are all the I planes. Mean, yeah, Enjoy not, dying. Oh, oh oh. I'm not shocked that the players are really stuck on this bit because it's super annoying. You have to make sure you take down enough planes before they even take off, or else you won't even have enough stingers for a shoot too late. <laughs> I mean, he still hit them. Even yeah, though it's too late. Hit, now he's gonna hit the rest. He's out of stairs. Yeah, so gets, do they just hit, fly by and shoot you and you have to deal? Yeah. Okay. Now, what the Lightyear could shot. do is go and find a repair. Okay, uh, that, that is true. Um, and an ammo. Uh, so, Kapow, the orange dot is for your objectives. Yes, correct. I'm trying to think what else. The map is actually extremely helpful. Uh, yes. Floratia, I don't think, has been using it quite as much as Lightyear. No, he hasn't. That's, uh, it's a bit, bit of an issue, but... 
I mean, he's still doing pretty well, but he's been really stuck in this area for at least 20 minutes now. Yeah, if you still win, then big deal. You missed uh, the helpfulness of one of the mechanics, but at the same time, you know, with the amount of time that we have left, you need to use everything to your advantage. And every time Laratia gets hit by those planes, that's a lot of damage. Like, yeah. it, it makes it extremely difficult to control the helicopter. Like, I'm not even kidding. If you just let go of all the controls, your helicopter basically uh, spins. Yeah, it just spins around. Yeah. Not super fast, but... Oh my it's gosh, significant. Okay. Like, it's significant enough that going in a straight line is extremely difficult. I think you can actually get to the point where uh, you're spinning fast enough that you can only turn one direction and not the other, so you just have to keep um, turning right in order not, to... That's not quite true. Oh, okay. It becomes very hard to turn in that one direction, but you can still do it. Fine, it Mike. Sucks. Yeah, my name Mikey Yama. Let me go and correct for Sancha. <laughs> 12, <laughs> 1 p.m. is when p.m. starts. <laughs> yeah. You see how it is, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so glad we can joke about dumb stuff like this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, everybody, you know, if you like Cusa Grande, we've got one more match coming up after this, as well as three matches tomorrow. Be sure you go check out the schedule, see uh, what's happening. I'm pretty dang excited for... Uh, for this weekend. It's been great so far. Beep, 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 beep. So even though it said too late for Loracia, he was actually just in time because he didn't get hit. Yep. So hopefully he destroyed... Okay, good. He destroyed just enough off the runway. It's just a suggestion to be, like, faster. You're fine. You didn't die. Kill. Yeah. The game lies, okay? I mean, I guess that shouldn't be a surprise, right? This game is full of lies. You know what, Kapow? I'm not sure why the orange dot remains there even after you destroy the radar. I don't know if des destroying the radar is 100% necessary. But Lorassi is now taking it nice and slow, um, which is actually a good idea. He's taking a little bit of damage here and there, but it's not too much until that missile launcher just annihilated him. But he's really going to want to get fuel and uh, repairs. And OK, good. He is pausing the game to, to check up on that. Yes, Kinda Nerdy Housewife also has air superiority. That's great. Yes, exactly. I wish I had air superiority. I've definitely got inferiority, let me tell you. <laughs> air inferiority? I can, I can like jump, when you're in the air, you can't do anything? I can jump a little bit, you know, but like, uh, that's e fair. even like trying to get out of the pool, yeah, the, the air just does not cooperate. It's just so hard to pull yourself up out of the water. I've got water superiority. I can float. Let me tell you. <laughs> and I think a lot of us have air inferiority. <laughs> Although there are people who can't float. Um, so, you know, there are people with water inferiority. Uh, yeah, that's called, for some reason, you are strangely in shape. Like, maybe not strangely, you're, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so both Lorassia and Lightyear are low in fuel. I'm not sure if they're aware of it because it hasn't really become a factor until now. Bad Road, you're not in shape and you can't float? How do you not float? I'm, I literally don't have to do anything and I'm gonna be bobbing around on the top of the water, Mike. <laughs> Oh, Lorassia, please don't blow up the fuel. Like in Subterranea, you can blow up the uh, helpful um, landings. So, oh, he just did it. Uh-oh. 
Well, it's fine. Yeah, so that was supposed to be fuel, but he's not getting any anymore. I know. It's fine. Oh my gosh. I can't spell anymore, Mike. My, ah, I can't. Or, I'm oh, trying yeah. to Rather. get things ready. <laughs> <laughs> when did the topic of spelling suddenly come? Uh, it's called. I'm trying to edit this spreadsheet so I can just export it for the when we move to the next matches. And uh, yeah, apparently, apparently J's and F's are very similar to each other. <laughs> what? I don't know, Mike. I don't know. But we've got ten minutes left. We're getting close to the end. <sighs> Honestly, at this point, Lightyear can steal the lead. Yes. Um, he has gone up to the point where Lorassia has. Uh, however, neither one of them has been able to get inside the top-down area of Mission Three. But the first one to do so will have made a considerable amount of progress, and it won't necessarily clinch the match at this point, but it will get, make it very hard uh, for another player to make come back. Oh my gosh. Uh, Lightyear just killed almost all of the planes. Yeah, all except for one nice. while they were on the ground. That was impressive. Actually, it's really impressive. Yeah, I've done this part. It's not simple. Like, I, I didn't only play that one time. Okay, fair. Yeah, I think he's purposely taking the death because he already took too much damage. Missiles! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get a glass of water. I'll be right back. All right. Go, Mike. I'll, I'll cover for your absence. So, <laughs> if people didn't know, Mike Yama is totally here with me right now doing commentary on this beautiful game, Red Zone. Hey, what do you think about helicopters? Uh, I think that's pretty good. Ah, helicopters rock. Yeah, I think so too, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, they got the missiles and the, the, the guns. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty fantastic. I love that. I love it. Well... It looks like Lightyear may have taken the lead. Lightyear is going inside the building. Yeah, that's pretty it's good. Leaching. That's pretty good. Oh. Oh, hello, Mike. Yeah, I'm glad that you were able to not disappear and do commentary with me during that section. It looks like Lightyear is in the building. Yes, Lightyear uh, is indeed in the lead. Um, and Lorassia. Uh, there's a chance to catch up, but the problem is now you can make very discernible progress in here. And so basically every step that Lightyear is making through the building is a bit, is a bit more progress. So, uh, and uh, he still has two out of three of his um, characters. I think Lorassia does too. So uh, I think he'll be able to make a fair amount of progress in this area. I don't think he'll beat it. Um, there, it's, it's, this place is a bit involved. Yeah, I think, like, uh, Lightyear is definitely making progress in here, so uh, Loratia just needs to get into the building. If Loratia can do that in the next minute or two, there could be a chance. It's, I don't know, it's going to be very hard, though, at this point. Oh, wow, Lightyear got the collapsing floor. That was close. That was very close. Uh, needs to pull the switch and does so. You know, I um, I if I were guarding a random switch inside uh, some warehouse somewhere, I would probably set up more than collapsing floors or something. I'd, I'd actually be really wary because I'd probably step on those myself, you know? Maybe uh, like an axe falling from the ceiling. Yeah, that'd get him. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd have to be wary of where the axe falls from the ceiling. Like, you'd have to remember that. Well, yeah, I got a brain, Mike. 
Well, yeah, but if, but if you have a brain, you can also remember where the collapsing floor is. They look similar. They look similar to the other spot. <laughs> Maybe I can put a big X on the floor to show where the where the axe would fall, you know? Because I... Or, no, a circle. Put a circle, because every but whenever you see a circle, you want to step in it, right? At least I do. <laughs> okay. okay, sure. And you can just make it out of chalk, okay? That way they think um, it was just a child drawing on the floor. I think Lightyear just killed himself with a grenade. <gasps> you could make a hopscotch thing in the hallway, okay? Because uh, if any of these characters come along, they're definitely going to try to do hopscotch. And then, bam, they land in the end. Axe falls. Bam. No more head. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. He fell. I just didn't see the collapsing floor. <laughs> yeah, it... At, at least, hey, he's got Mirage. Mirage? I don't know. Yeah. She, her arm is way too excited to be here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Okami of Games, this is indeed where the players made it to in Kuzo Rock Day 3. Um, they made it to the final floor of this area. I think Lightyear can make it because he's actually pretty close to um, the elevator to the next section. And you do actually need to go down there. there now, this go. is where the game gets really stupid because yeah. you have to walk right, and there's no indication that you're supposed to walk right. Gotta go right. I mean, just run into all the walls until. Exactly. You know, it's not that difficult. It's still pretty stupid, though. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Like my. Like my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> It always comes back to your cousin. I hope he's not watching this stream, okay? If you are, <laughs> it don't come over cousin. to my house over the summer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now the other cousin watches the stream, the... the... Okay, so Ooh. now there's an interesting twist. Lorassia has made it to the indoor section. However, Ooh. there's less than five minutes left, so he's really gonna have to hustle. The light year just died. Oh, uh, that means Lorassi has a chance. Yeah. Uh-oh, that's not good. That's not a good sign. That's okay, we've still got Mirage, I think. We, we still got Mirage. <laughs> Her sprite is just too good. It's so I good. know, right? I mean, she has the strongest core I've ever seen. What can I say? Okay, I um, bet she's like a magician or something. They, they stick things... Uh, sometimes there so that it looks like yeah. you're putting all this effort into it, but really you just got metal bars supporting you. So, she's probably faking it, okay? Alright, so, uh, for people in chat, um, basically if Lorassia can get down to the next area and hit the switch, then he will have made more progress. However, he has to do that very quickly. Yeah, and, and he's, it's all, not and he's almost dead. Yeah, simply put, humans are weak to bullets. <laughs> this is correct. As a even, human, I even agree. Even the very slow bullets, you know? Oh, no! Woo! Uh, I mean, I think that basically calls the match, but I, I still want to see rest. this play out. Yeah. <laughs> now, remember, neither player is being eliminated from this game. Uh, yeah. They are both continuing strong. Uh, it's just one of them will be going to, to the losers bracket and will be fighting to survive. But honestly, just based off of what I've seen so far, they they both, you know, have been strong players. This game is just ridiculously yeah. hard. Yeah, this game is ridiculously hard and unforgiving. And every time they make a mistake, they basically have to restart the entire stage. So I'm not shocked that they can't get past mission three. It's a hard it's a hard mission and it's when the game starts throwing it showing its true nature oh yeah ah, the music's so good though yeah it is really good music it's just yeah every um, every song is a bop would recommend um, listening to the song Night Mission, which is the outdoor uh, helicopter theme uh, for the next area, um, which starts at Mission 5. Okay. 
I'll I'll take a look through uh, the the soundtrack for the game, see if there are any other surprise hits. Oh, Loratia, no! It did not shoot down enough planes. This is going to be very yeah. fast. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, only about 15 seconds left, so no real progress the players can make. But we get to see and hear the explosion one last time. The music! Nuclear war! Death before dishonor! Ah, well, you know what? I feel like neither player dishonored us because that is yep. time. And we did have a lot of death, but neither gave up. Neither surrendered. Yep. Yeah. There was no dishonor, but there was... But as Lorassia said, it certainly has been plenty of death. <laughs> so much death. Oh, yeah. so, so much death. Uh, so, as a quick summary here, during this, Lorasia had a pretty early lead and a strong lead, but towards the end, I believe in the last 10 minutes, Lightyear managed to make a comeback, passing Loratia and holding on to that spot. Lightyear takes the victory. Uh, Loratia will be going down to the loser's bracket to duke it out there. Yeah, how... What, what are your thoughts, Mike? How how did things go? Uh, I think both players did really well, uh, especially since this is the kind of game where like you can get really stuck for a long time. And they both, you know, did, did a good job of figuring out the mechanics. Um, unfortunately, the game is just super unforgiving, so it's very hard to make progress in, but they both made a fair amount of progress. Oh, yeah. Uh, they they definitely made a pretty dang good push. Uh, honestly, I I feel like I wouldn't feel bad about that loss. Uh, honestly, Loretia kept making a little bit more progress every single time. So it is a loss, but it's not one with a giant wall. You know, it's one that just one person happened to do a little bit better. I. I don't see them hopping into chat right now, so yeah. uh, we'll we'll have to see what uh, they think. But uh, yeah, I think that I'm pretty good with this. Okay, you're asking if they want to hop in the call. Come on, anyone want to come talk to me? I'm so lonely. <laughs> so lonely. Oh well, it's my lonely journey. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. If you remember that game. <laughs> no, I don't think I do. Okay, Lightyear you, 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 says You don't remember the game like, Mike's Lonely Journey? Oh, wait, yeah, I remember your lonely journey, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Lightyear. Such a good journey. Hello, Lightyear. Hello, Rosentia. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Congratulations. I believe it was right in the last 10 minutes that you moved into the lead, making a that good amount correct. of progress in the dungeon air, quote unquote dungeon, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thanks. So what are your thoughts about the game? Uh, well, I kind of got reminded of Desert Strike and then, you know, but they gave you a copter made out of paper mache. <laughs> yeah. And they have miss and they have anti-air missiles for days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So many anti-air missiles. Yeah. But like what, what's cool about watching this is that I know how difficult it is, especially when you take any sort of damage and uh, seeing people going from dying super quickly to making a good amount of progress, especially with the the planes that take off and give you a timer. That, that section made me panic so much the first time I saw it. Oh, uh, by the way, Lightyear, um, about that sentry gun, uh, what yes. you're supposed to, so the way to take care of that in the game does not tell you this at all is that you actually want to take care of that objective in the first mission so you have plenty of time to just walk into the base to just fly into the base the second mission oh okay so like it's not powered up if, until you get the um disc or whatever uh no, no no i mean like it's always powered up but like you can take care of that objective during mission one, so you're not under the minute long time limit. Yeah, you can actually oh. go and blow up, uh, I believe yeah. it's the thing that looks uh, like a radiation symbol. 
Exactly. It looks like the nuclear radiation symbol. Oh, that up yeah, I passed by that a couple point. times. I thought I mean, it was like the missile silo, and they would be blowing it up would be very, very bad. Yeah, um, <laughs> you and Laurasia just kind of, you know, took damage through it, which is the faster method, but like, uh, oh, you, yeah. defi you definitely had a struggle with that, with that sentry gun. <laughs> Well, seriously, though, good job here. I think we're yeah. getting to the point where we're going to need to move on. Any any last thoughts, Light here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that covers it. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, good luck in your round three. You're staying strong in the winner's bracket. Always good to see, uh, see people who manage to hold on and take these victories. So good, good, good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, take care, Lightyear. Take care, Mike. All right, see you around, Rosentia. See ya! Well, everybody, this is Cuso Grande, the Bad Video Game Tournament. I'm going to run a quick ad. Uh, I've got to run away as well, so I might be gone longer than the ad, but I will be back. See you in a minute or so.
Hello everybody, welcome on back to Cuso Grande, the bad video game tournament. Give me just one minute, I have a tiny amount of progress. Progress? Tiny amount of setup I still need to do. Don't forget though, we do have three matches for Cuso Grande tomorrow. We also have... What else do we have? 